take you to the comic shop I'll let you read about Cyclops I'll have you spending all you got Jawbreakers is looking hot Zach My people, my people, my people, Big Legit back here to talk to all of you out there about totally awesome comic books that what? Move the needle. We're going back to the 90s when I loved being alive. I mean, I still love being alive because I'm talking to all you beautiful people out there, but man, the 1990s, man, that was something special. The only thing more special than the 1990s was the 1980s. And the only thing more special than the 1980s was probably the 1950s. Boom! There it is, Doom 2099. You know that this gem is exactly what you've been waiting for in the 2099 series of videos we're doing here. Again, beautiful foil edging, beautiful art. Look at this. This one really did pull me in as a kid because Doom was totally awesome in my opinion. I was, I was a big Fantastic Four fan. I started uh, on the Fantastic Four in ways. Uh, you know, we've We've talked about comic books I liked previously. You know, it was the Red Skull on the cover of the uh, official handbook of the Marvel Universe, Book of the Dead Deluxe Edition, that sucked me in. And this is very similar imagery with Doom Triumphant and this lightning bolt striking around him. And he's got an awesome new adamantium costume that's totally cool. So this little gem is from January of 1993. And I believe this is the third 2099 book to be released by Marvel. It starts off in Latveria with uh, some villains, you know, trying to trying to make a deal here. And sure enough, the the you know the real bad guys are on to them. They can't even make a black market deal without guardsmen coming for them. Oh, hell breaks loose, and like out of nowhere, out of literally nowhere, boom! Oh no, it's not a boom! It's a Shracker, shracker, shracker. It's the sound of the energy of doom appearing in the year 2099, and it is. It is doom, and he shut my castle, destroyed. Oh, what has happened here? How long have I been away? Attention, you are an unauthorized presence interfering with official guardsman business. Identify yourself immediately, mm, droid. You dare threaten me? Don't you know who I am? Seems like it should be, you dare threaten me? Do you not know who I am? I'm not sure if they know how they want Doom to talk in this one. I am Doom! <laughs> and he just blasts him. Stanley presents Muses of Fire, written by John Francis Moore, who uh, did a pretty good job actually in the 2099 series. Pat Broderick did the art here. John Costanza was the letterer. Well, you're not gonna go through all the names. Best of the best, championship karate. Karate, if you will. You can have international matches. You can train with the heavy bag, moving pads, and sparring. Select your style from over 60 moves. It's like, it's like WWE 2018 before WWE 2018 existed. <laughs> anyway, and these kids are just like, Who, who's that guy? And he's like, I'm doomed. Don't worry, I'm not going to beat you up. You're children. I just want to have a word with you. What year is this? 2099? Hmm, much later than I expected. Can it be I have been forgotten in my own land? It is time to make Latveria remember. And basically that's what's going to happen. So he goes to uh, Godradia, which is Latveria's capital. I didn't know that. It kind of reminds me of Gojira, the Japanese Godzilla. So, you know, he goes here and Tiger Wild is this dude who is like the main villain in this, big baddie here, who's basically taken over everything in Latveria. This is all that remains of your assassin. Alchemic standards seem to have deteriorated since my employment in the elite. My dear Tiger Wild, oh, sorry, different voice. My dear Tiger Wild, officially Alchemax denies any connection to the alleged assassin. Your long ago departure is of little concern to the firm. Don't patronize me, Stone. Your board of directors is very concerned about Latveria. If Alchemax wants war, I'll gladly oblige, and I'll take great satisfaction in personally grinding you into dust. 
So there's obviously this big feud going on between Tiger Wild and Alchemax. Alchemax, we've talked about, is you know an ongoing corporation in every 2099 book there is. Doom blows the hell out of the door, comes in just like, this is my town, what are you doing? I demand to see Tiger Wild, and Tiger Wild thinks it's a Doom robot because occasionally, I guess, a Doom robot would show up to try to fight, but they're all weak. And his chick fortune here, she uh, she reads the tarot cards much like much like Solitaire in James Bond Live and Let Die, which is my favorite Bond movie. And love that Roger Moore, and you may not, but this is actually Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman played Solitaire. I think it was actually her feature film debut, and she was smoking hot in Live and Let Die. So go check that out. You know, if you want a Bond movie that will move the needle, it is definitely Live and Let Die. She's like worried because, you know, the, the cards tell her it's the hangman and that's danger. And Doom's like, I'm no robot. So, you know, they have this conversation. Doom grabs him by the throat, snatches him up. Your reflexes are faster than I expected, but I tired of this nostalgia. You are a ghost of the past. Nothing more. And so just basically Tiger Wild takes out Doom, takes his Trinity Blaster, no, no relationship to the Matrix. Did you really think your antiquated armor was enough to succeed where the best corporate soldiers failed? Mm, system didn't absorb shock. Power reserves down. Didn't anticipate. Cyborg, I've built an empire on the corpses of those who underestimated me. Count yourself among them. Puts the Trinity Blaster right to Doom's chest and just, boom, shoots. Now you've annoyed me, but check it out, right? So like, it's a little confusing here because he points the gun and you see this Turns out what's actually happened is the gun has not gone off. Doom has blown off Tiger Wild's hand. Now you've annoyed me. Before I send you to your maker, one final question. Who sent you? Alchemax? Novograd? Pixel? I answer to no one. I am Doom, you, you, so you said. We'll kill you. And so like basically he just starts making him disappear in little bubbles. The bubbles. The bubbles. The bubbles. Feel the heat as your circuitry overloads and fuses into slag. <laughs> no. Oh, yes. So basically, Tiger Wild is like super powerful compared to Dr. Doom, but here's what's really cool is he takes his mask off and we get to see Dr. Doom's face, and it's fine. There's no damage at all. See, see the, the theory is, is that Dr. Doom got a little cut on his face, and he was so vain that he couldn't bear to show it to anyone. And even Tiger Wild is kind of shocked by, by this. So, uh, you know, history says Doom's face was hideously scarred. Allow me to complete this masquerade. So basically sizzles his face off and tells him to get out of here. But, but uh, Fortune, AKA, you know, Solitaire from James Bond. Uh, I'll see the neurotechs get the body, get real. Those scalpel junkies will only turn him inside out until he finally dies. And the cards tell me he's worth more alive. Scalpel junkies, what a great term. This is one of the cool things about the 80s and 90s is we would come up with words that we thought would be used in the future. And scalpel junkies might be my favorite word that we thought was going to be used in our cyberpunk future, which is 2099 is a cyberpunk future. Four days later, near the Siri River, no, no relationship to Apple products. Oh, I am uh, alive. My body aches and my face burns. Oh, my face. Who are you, child? So she basically explains that, you know, she's fortune and they're camped here, you know. This is where Doom actually camped as a child with his parents as they traveled south from Go Gojradia. Um, and they're taking this risk, but she knows it's worth it because Doom can help her overthrow Tiger Wild. And she's, like, you know, secretly going to be a good guy. And it turns out uh, that I grew up hearing stories of Latveria's Zerifo born monarch. This has been passed from generation to generation. The Zafiro clan is the clan that his parents were from, and they're basically like gypsies. Um, so they would, you know, travel around in wagons and do magic and stuff, I guess. Uh, anyway, she has this this medallion that's been passed down from generation to generation. Dooms. I gave this to Boris, the one man I called friend. Gypsy blood bonds us fortune. So basically, Doom's like, I'm gonna team up with these people. Uh, they go to see a cyber savant. This is Wire, he's a cyber savant. 
And he's going to basically create the whole new Doom outfit. Uh, Fortune gave me the specs. You're scoping Razor Edge tech. After scavenging the obsolete circuitry in this tin can, straight up, you need my help. Most people can't process the volume of information, wire inputs, but he skates through cyberspace effortlessly. A worthy talent, if you can recognize truly vulnerable, inf truly valuable information. Access. Everything you need in a gift wrap package. Only one problem. We have to leave the country. The Mahela Mountains uh, border most of southern Latveria. They have helped keep the rest of the world from Latveria. And Latveria from the rest of the world. Oh, this is crazy. Why should we trust someone who believes he ruled Latveria a hundred years ago? If you wish to turn back, girl, go. Stand with me or not at all. Uh, I'm with you, but only so we don't get wire killed. The amulet fortune. So she hands over the amulet and he like points it here. And a secret mountain opens up with an awesome like TIE fighter in it. It's an X-Wing. It's a Millennium Falcon. I don't know. Oh, Sunset Riders. Ah, uh, well, there you go. So basically, like, you know, this is all about Doom going and taking over uh, Pixel, which is the Paloma Information Exchange Limited, where they're going to get, you know, some good, some good stuff for his new suit. And certainly, that's what they do. They bust into the joint. You are not Doom. I am Doom. Doom's destiny was to rule. That destiny is mine. This is really well laid out page here, too. Um, I really like the use of red contrasting with the green, you know, our, our colorblind friends won't be able to see this, but that's okay. We can see it. That destiny is mine. Doom needed no one. You hobble yourself with women and children. They are Zephyro, gypsies like my parents. You have no parents. You have nothing, not even your memory. But I remember my father's death, the explosion, the Tibetan monastery, conquering Latveria. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here, but I want to know what was Doom doing in the Tibetan monastery. I apparently missed that. You remember fiction. Richards and his family again and again. Fever dreams. I am Doom. Doom is dead. Is dead. Is dead. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. Pixel's manufacturing capabilities have proved most efficient. Pixel won't be thrilled. You've exhausted their adamantium lankside stockpile. So basically, he gets a totally awesome brand new suit made of it, Mantium. And that's, oh, I, it, the alloy makes the armor lighter and stronger. It feels much more a part of me. That's the cyber mesh beneath the armor. It gives you tactile interface with the nanotech in your head. There's a battery of tests I'd like to run. I have no time for tests. I have been reborn and every moment counts. Dr. Doom is dead. Long live Doom! We have a nice Henry V quote. And this is clearly going to be continued. That's great, that's great image, you know. I wish the hood was up, though. Might make it more impactful. And not yellow power, you know. I liked the electricity, or excuse me, not the electricity, but the lightning bolts in yellow on the front. That, that did something for me. This energy explosion isn't doing much for me, but good art. This is actually a, a pretty good story. This is one thing I want to say about all the 90, 2099 books is they start off right. They start by revealing their characters. And we've had some comics like uh, Youngblood number one that didn't really tell us anything about any of the characters in an appropriate fashion. Same thing with uh, Ash number one by uh, Joey Quesadilla and uh, Jimmy Palmetto that, uh, that also didn't really tell us what the hell was going on. But all of these 2099 books have done a very good at that in letting us understand the world we're in, letting us understand all of our characters, what they do, where they're going, who our bad guys are. John Francis Moore is a heck of a writer so far. So let's see. Joey Cavallari, editor for 2099 imprint, who's in charge here? If the world is really being run by a handful of greedy old men at the top, why can't they at least do a better job of it? Today, polling passes for statesmanship, advertising passes for literature, infomercials pass for entertainment, reruns pass for nostalgia, work relationships pass for family. We order our future to go with a side order of fries. Frank Zappa called Americans those who chose cheese. What does he mean? 
Consider H.L. Mencken's thoughts that most people want security in this world, not liberty. Most people will give up their liberty for security, and we've, we've learned that in the post 9-11 society. It's very interesting to see this discussed a decade earlier, but a lot of people around the world have given up their liberty for freedom, and in America, they have struggled to take away our freedoms under the guise of security for, for many years. Uh, the simple fact that you're going to have a government algorithm that is reviewing this video you're watching to see what's going on with me and what I believe in, and then storing it somewhere off-site in a data farm, that's just reality. That's just how it is. Everything you do digitally is monitored. So, consider H.L. Mencken's thought that most people want security in this world, not liberty. If the revolution is televised, it better not be opposite Roseanne. That's right, not, not the Connors. Roseanne. Good show. Always been, always will be. The future's so bright, I gotta wear my corporate logo on my t-shirt. In fact, why don't I just get it tattooed on my chest? Whoa. Time out. I feel like Joey Cavallari knew where the world was going in the early 1990s when no one realized where the world was going. This guy's got, got a lot going on in his mind and I like that. So the future's so bright, I gotta wear my corporate logo on my t-shirt. In fact, why don't I just get it tattooed on my chest? Popular culture, forget it. It now consists of digging up old dead pop icons and sampling them, chopping and channeling them to do duets with their grandkids or sell soda pop. Even modern fine art consists of cribbing from past masterpieces. Out of a fine-tuned sense of revenge, we have used the techniques of the modern world against it. As pioneer video artist Nam June Paik said, I use technology in order to hate it properly. So we have sampled the Doom mythos, chopped and channeled it, and turned his anger loose on our future. Doom 2099 presents a vision calculated to make Metropolis look like a date with Judy Jensen. All roads lead to Latveria. You read it here first, and I just want to let you kids know, Metropolis is not just where Superman lives. It was actually a very, 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 very famous uh, silent film, one of the first science fiction films ever made. Some people would say that it is the first science fiction film made, but you know, there was uh, uh, some Frankenstein movies before that and things of this nature, and that is also science fiction, but yeah, go watch a little of Metropolis, kids, and learn, learn about the, the past. So anyways, this was a great comic book, and this is one of the 2099 titles that really did move the needle back in the 90s. This did get a good little run for quite a while. People liked it a lot, but now we gotta move on, right? And I would suggest that you pick up a few issues of Doom 2099 and see if it moves the needle for you. Because that's what this is all about, is finding old comic books that remind us of what comic books are supposed to be. Comic books are supposed to be engaging stories for children that help them learn right from wrong. They are morality tales. They're just like professional wrestling. They are morality tales of good versus evil. And sometimes the bad guys do turn good when they realize the mistakes they've made, when they realize that, that the darkest evil out there is much worse than they could have ever been in their malfeasance. So, tell me below, in the comments, did you like Doom 2099? If yes, why? If no, how come? Are there any other 2099 comic books you love? Tell me in the comments below. Remember to like this video. Remember to subscribe. Hit the ding dong for notifications because we're putting out videos every day. And I'll see you next time on the Testosterone Overload Comic Book Review.